Hi, this is Jace Lunger, and welcome to my review of Big Top Pee Wee. Right after uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure in Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee was at the top of the world. With his movie back in 88, he decided to go more Pee Wee's Playhouse than Pee Wee's Big Adventure with his movies since it's more fa family centric than like uh, Big Adventure. But for this one, I remember when I was a kid, I used to be kind of like, there's some parts that are funny in the uh, Big Top Pee Wee, some parts are good. But most of the movie, I remember being kind of uh, bored at the time. Now that I watch it as an adult, I kind of understood it. Not only do I understand it, though, but I actually kind of liked uh, Big Top Pee Wee. Because I know a lot of people were going to hate it because it's too corny to this. What Pee Wee was trying to go for, though, he's trying to go for the whole 1940s, 50s uh, screwball fantasy comedy effect on it. Kind of like a Wizard of Oz meets... Any movie from like uh, with screwball comedies from uh, the 40s and 50s. I think it's what uh, Paul Rubens was going for. Speaking of which, uh, the aesthetic that Pee Wee was in is a lot like uh, those towns you see back in the 1940s and 50s, with a few exceptions. Like you got the current products look current, but although the magazines look like they're from the 40s and 50s, the one that Pee Wee was reading. But there's this one character in particular I used to not like. But I really like, now that I more relate to him as an adult, his name is um, Brian. He owned the general store, and Brian was, uh, he, he wanted nothing. He, he wanted, like, uh, none. He wanted to do nothing with Pee-wee right there. It's just like, um, he was very irritated, but I bet you at the time, it's like one of those things that when I was a kid, I used to hate the Ryan character. When I watched it as an adult, I really understood what he went through. Because he, had, he owns his general store, and the last thing he wanted to deal with is like a pesky customer. I'm sorry, Pee Wee, but you're in the wrong this time. You're in the wrong. I never thought I'd be like uh, picking on Pee Wee for that one. This is like one of those rare times where I disagree with Pee Wee. But there's the thing we can all agree about, though, is uh, Gina, the trapeze artist. Uh, played by Valeria Galeno, who later that year, in 1988, would be on Rain Man. And wanted to be on the Hot Shots movies and Clean Slate with um, Dana Carvey. And that's a really um, nice lady, too, though, because she's very easy on the eyes. In terms of, like, very, you know, as far as Pee Wee girls are concerned, she's, like, the hottest one. She's, like, the more, obviously, the more exotic and the more, like, uh... You know, more easy on the eyes, while Dottie from the last movie is the most relatable. She's the one that's like, uh, any guy would want to hang out with, and, you know, if you're lucky, you know, to be with. While Gina, on the other hand, is, it's basically like a guy's wet dream in a kid's movie. Let's just put it that way. And the other cast, like, notables are Penelope Ann Miller. She plays, uh... Kiwi's ex fiance uh, Winnie, and Benicio Del Toro, in his early role, plays uh, the dog boy. And if you look real, if you look really, really closely, one at the ver almost the very end of the movie, when the townspeople were turned to kids due to the due to Peewee's, uh invention of cocktail weenies, you can see um, the late Dustin Diamond before he was Screech. Played one of the, like the the townspeople that like uh, went from being an adult to being a kid. I thought that was to be like a uh, a good note to like uh, settle in on. Of course, I love Chris Christopherson as uh, Mace Montana. To me, other than Ryan, Gina, and of course Pee Wee, he's he's the best character of the movie. He's like he played it straight. Didn't try to overdo it. He just plays it like what if Indiana Jones were a uh, ringmaster at a circus. That's how he put it that way. Because he also dressed like Indiana Jones, too. He had the brown leather jacket and the fedora. Although he had a little bit of long hair and a beard. But other than that, he's, he's Indiana Jones. If you were, like, a, instead of being an archaeologist, he's a ringmaster. The ringmaster, or, like, what do you call it? The guy in charge of the circus. So, anyway, I put this movie as a level of, like, uh, same level I would put Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise, and Major League 2 as the sequel that is better than it has any right to be. Not as good as the original, but definitely worth a watch. Late.